In today's world where the lines between physical and digital reality are blurring, a new kind of warfare is emerging, cyber warfare. This is a battleground where nations and rogue hackers clash, not with bullets and bombs, but with lines of code and the power of the internet. The stakes in this cyber war are high. Imagine an attack that could cripple even a nation's critical infrastructure, plunging its people into darkness and chaos, stealing sensitive data, compromising national security and personal privacy, even demonizing big names in the business and politics industry, tearing apart the fabric of society with dishonesty and trust. In recent years, the global cybersecurity landscape has experienced a surge in threats, with cyber criminals capitalizing on the vulnerabilities of remote work environments and compromised networks. This has led to a staggering 358% increase in malware attacks compared to previous years. Russia's invasion of Ukraine worsened the cybersecurity crisis, triggering an eight-fold spike in Russian-originated phishing attacks targeting email addresses of European and US-based businesses. This surge in cyber attacks highlights the heightened risk made by geopolitical tensions and the growing sophistication of cyber criminals. One notable attack was the recent cyber onslaught from Russia that hit key U.S. government branches, with the Energy Department taking a significant hit. Authorities are containing the fallout, but the scope of potential victims is vast, including state governments and major corporations. This wasn't just an attack on federal agencies. It hit both public and private sectors. There have been fears that the Russian government would step up its attacks in response to U.S. support for Ukraine causing a big headache for U.S. officials. And though a criminal gang may be behind it, the consequences are severe. Their goal, target the electric grid, disrupt oil and gas distribution, cripple financial systems, and even snatch ATM functionality to cause maximum damage and undermine America's power. Lives are at stake, showing the dark side of modern warfare. In this tricky situation, cyber criminals work like entrepreneurs, always finding weaknesses in software to break into crucial systems. The challenge is they just need to succeed once to break through these tough defenses, making it hard for authorities to stop them. Truly, how do you compete with enemies that you can't see, let alone attacks from the other side of the world? But we're not stopping there. Did you hear about how North Korea tried to steal one billion? This is the boldest cyber crime ever. Imagine stealing a billion dollars from a national bank and trying to move it across different countries. It's truly mind blowing. The Lazarus Group, likely supported by North Korean intelligence, is behind major hacks, including the infamous breach of Sony Pictures Entertainment. Hollywood is shaken by what might be its biggest computer hack, shutting down studios, crashing TV networks, and trying a billion dollar heist from Bangladesh. Meanwhile, the $81 million money laundering scandal is now one of Asia's biggest bank heists, leaving security experts saying that this is one of the worst and most widespread pieces of malware they've ever seen. So how did they do it? Well, it's actually pretty simple, but clever. They made social media profiles and used fake identities to send emails and interact with recipients. Posing as a job applicant named Rasal Alam, they sent a dubious CV to Bangladesh Bank. Opening the CV triggered a virus infecting their computers. Finding a billion dollars in Bangladesh Bank at the New York Federal Reserve Bank, their plan unfolded. The goal? To discreetly transfer the money, avoiding attention. The Philippines became their chosen escape route. The timing added intrigue. The hack in Bangladesh, money in New York, and its transit to the Philippines, all planned within a tight five-day window. Bangladesh Bank uncovered the plot, connecting the dots by reaching out to the New York Fed. Their meticulous plan unfolded across three different time zones and various global bank holidays, creating a perfectly mapped bank heist. They didn't grab the whole billion, but they got pretty close. A couple of slip-ups prevented the full amount, and they ended up with 81 million. Now the hackers face a new challenge, the money is still traceable. They shifted it from New York to the Philippines into their bank accounts. This shows how cyber warfare isn't just about stealing data or causing chaos. It's about real money, power, and consequences. Now picture a higher stakes scenario, not a bank, but a power grid, a dam, or a nuclear plant as the target. Imagine hackers hitting a country's power grid, shutting it all down and casting the nation into darkness. Hospitals struggle, transportation halts, and people are left in the cold. The economic toll would be colossal. These may seem like it's purely fiction, but they might be potential threats in the future. 
Cyber warfare is a fresh kind of battle without physical weapons or soldiers, just a few lines of code and malicious intent. So are we ready for this new warfare? Are we safeguarding our critical infrastructure enough? Most importantly, are we ready for the fallout if we fall short? We can be. Companies in the US are awakening to the reality that cybersecurity needs a major overhaul, and they're turning to the robust embrace of models like Zero Trust. Just imagine, a security model where trust is no longer assumed, but rigorously verified. A comfort that everyone, even households, would want after huge fallouts and attacks similar to the stories we just heard. With Zero Trust, every identity, whether inside or outside the network perimeter, is considered a potential threat. Access is a privilege earned through strict verification and authorization. It's not just a set of tools, it's a philosophy, a mindset that challenges the assumption that trust is a given. Ready to fortify your defenses? 